Hello, sir. Uh, myself, Sobhan. Uh, I am a research scholar in biological science. I have a question about uh, the science and pseudoscience. So, what are the definition of the which which one is the science and which one is the pseudoscience? Because it's very well known. Science is falsifiable, verifiable. Science does not come up with truths. It comes up with theories. Simple. Uh, sir, sometimes, sir, uh, we have to means uh, believe on uh, which one don't that. Uh, you know, in which we don't have any uh, knowledge like uh, any people he don't have any uh, uh, knowledge in the medical sector so he have to believe on that that is a science and but there is a sector in which there are professionals right and there are established books and there is an entire community based on science you don't just you don't just blindly believe on a doctor the doctor has is certified by a particular institution Right? And that institution is founded on science. So science and pseudoscience, I don't know how is it even possible to be confused between the two. Science is based on experimentation. Science says whatever I have known can be rejected if even one observation to the contrary is found. You can have a long-standing, well-established theory running since centuries. But if you can have even one observation contrary to the theory, the entire theory stands nullified. That science, extremely honest. Further, the observations of science are not supposed to be subjective. They are not supposed to be person dependent. You perform an experiment that should yield the same result as he performing the experiment. And multiple times in India, in America, in Africa, the same experiment should yield exactly the same results. That's science. You cannot say, I have great divine powers. So if I do this, only then the results will come. That's pseudoscience. If Babaji does something, the results will come. If you do the same thing, the results will not come. Because Babaji has mystical powers. That's pseudoscience. Science is, time period of the pendulum remains 2 pi root L by G, irrespective of who performs the experiment. That's science. How is there possibility of confusion? Uh, sir, uh, like there is an example, uh, like in the case of the homeopathy. So, some scientists and also uh, allopathy doctors don't believe on the science behind the homeopathy, but they are also uh, means homeopathy uh, means uh, uh, in the also in the hospitals and it is also certified by the government. The government can do anything. What does government have to do with science? Government can do anything. Government can push belief systems in the name of knowledge system. Government can do anything. What does government have to do with science? Do you vote your government to power on the basis of science? Did they ask for votes in the name of science? They asked for votes in the name of all kinds of nonsense and they got the votes. Where does science come into the picture now? And homeopathy, well, you know, there is nothing called allopathy. There is just the field of medicine. No doctor will say, I am an allopathic doctor. He is just a doctor. He is a medical professional. Homeopathy has been conclusively shown to be not only ineffective, but actually just a sham. The simple thing is, the the... The concentrations to which chemicals are diluted in homeopathy, they are impossible to attain. They are impossible to attain. Sometimes the concentrations are such that if you put even one molecule of a particular reagent in the entire oceans on earth, still that concentration cannot be achieved. Homeopathy wants to achieve very, 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 very low concentrations. To have low concentrations, you need to have an X by Y, in which X should be small and Y should be large. Now, how small can X be? What is the minimum value that X can have? One, at least one molecule will be there of the reagent. But if you want to make X by Y very small, keeping X as minimum one, then Y has to be very large. The problem is, the entire earth does not have that kind of water that you need for homeopathy certain for, for certain concentrations to work for certain diseases.
and that's all available just just read the read the literature and you'll come to know of it thank you sir good evening sir i am rudhima a third year engineering student so basically after we die our after life is based on what all karmas we did in our life so recently i lost my grandmother and i read garud puran even in that there is description of uh, everything that happens in the after life it's totally based on what all karmas one has done so if it's just uh, based on what all karmas we do in the life then then uh, why do we like have to perform various work throughout our life i mean that we first we study then we get a job then we have children and then all that life cycle that we're trapped in why like what is the ultimate goal of life is what i'm trying to ask the purans all belong to the smriti literature and are very recent they do not contain science huh and anything mentioned in the puranic literature is to be rejected if it does not concur with the vedantic darshan you getting it there is nothing that enters the body there is nothing that leaves the body who will make that great journey that the puran alludes to think of think of your birth you really think some kind of soul came flying and entered the mother's womb and if nothing entered the fetus how can anything leave the dead body for somebody to leave first of all somebody should have entered can somebody check out of a hotel room if he never checked in in the first place did you really ever check in come on the sperm cell meets the egg cell who is checking in nobody that's life what do you call as life is already there in these two cells the sperm cell and the egg cell there is no soul or jivatma coming flying from somewhere to enter the fetus now so like uh, good karma and bad karma do they exist i mean for you when you are alive once you are gone what will you do with that do do great things because it's your responsibility to be joyful to be liberated as you are alive you are asking me this question so that you can have a great afterlife are you asking me this question so that you can attain swarg is that the purpose no the purpose is you had a burning curiosity right when was that curiosity when when t is equal to zero do you want that curiosity to be quenched at t is equal to 10000 curiosity is like a headache is it not you want an answer you are not getting the answer that's like a headache if you have a headache today do you want the the pill 10000 years later or do you want it right now hmm. the purpose of good karma is to be joyful right now future is not the objective you are problemed right now you want the solution right now good karma is the instantaneous solution and good karma does not mean gathering brownie points to be redeemed later on good karma means acting from a good center acting from a good center being good not just doing good being good 
that's good karma being good hmm? so then like what is the origin of life matter matter itself is the origin of life the origin of matter is the origin of life how does life begin no nothing long chains of polymers huge amino acids proteins and then they start behaving in a certain way they start self replicating and that's what you call as life where does that come from life comes from material material becomes life amino acids they start behaving in a certain way and then they organize into bigger and bigger and bigger units and the biggest unit you call as the human being so then like what is the goal of life if i am unwell right now do i need a goal of life or do i need a goal for this moment if i am in a burning house should i ask what is the goal of life if i am in a burning house what is the goal to get out that's the goal we all are in burning houses get out that's the goal and getting out is not a thing of the future you have to do it right away that's that's suddenly not settled i understand i mean it's it's deep deep time honored conditioning hmm? takes long to go away but yeah sir my question is again a follow up to this question you said that the matter is the origin of life then what separates things which are alive and which are not alive living and non living what separates both of them when both of them come from matter and uh, why is it that only certain things become alive and other things don't become alive everything is in the process of becoming alive and becoming dead you are in the process of becoming dead are you not and the soil out there is in the process of becoming alive the soil will soon become a flower and then you will say see it is alive you will soon become the soil and then you will say you know you know gone finished so it is cycle alive becomes dead dead becomes alive i understand what separates the living from the non living you know think of the viruses they stand at the boundary you can neither call them living nor call them non living and they give you beautiful insight into how the material itself turns into consciousness we have as human beings we have just very freshly appeared from this soil viruses are our great 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 grandfathers they were there when long before we were here and long after we are gone due to climate change or nuclear war viruses would still be here but it is very difficult to say whether a virus is a living thing or a non living thing it shows properties of both similarly when you look at several organisms that are single celled it becomes very difficult to say what is going on is it living is it dead what is what, what is it the whole the whole thing they are doing and there there you come to see oh this is how that starts which we call as life it's not the work of some god who keeps sending down souls and then the souls come here and then uh, <laughs> make uh, make a mess of the planet for a while and then they check out and return to god it's a fantastic story it's a fairy tale time to grow up so is does a super power exist yeah exists and sleeps within you you are the only superpower hmm the moment you ask does a superpower exist do you see the horrible assumption contained you said does a superpower exist outside of me so what are you saying oh safely i am out i don't want take to take the responsibility of being a superpower so let the superpower be somewhere out there you are the superpower you have to you have to first of all just just get rid of 
all that is powerless and needless about you. We have gathered a lot of things that make us powerless, like the concepts you are talking of. Those concepts make you powerless. Once you get rid of those concepts, you are the superpower. That superpower in the, in the, in the Sanatan philosophy is called as the Self, Atma. That's the Shruti that all Puranic literature, all Smriti is supposed to submit itself to. The only superpower is the Self, Atma, me. There is no other superpower. Mm.